Hey y'all, I am Ivy Odom, a test kitchen professional in the Southern Living Test Kitchen. And this is What's Cooking with Southern Living. Today, we are making a skillet apple cobbler with drop biscuits. It is so easy and so delicious and I can't wait to cook it with y'all. So, welcome to my kitchen. The very first thing that we have to do with pretty much any baked apple recipe is peel and slice apples. And usually all of these baked apple recipes use so many apples. This recipe in particular calls to use eight. So let's get to peeling. I am using a mixture of Granny Smith and Honeycrisp apples. One is super tart and one is super sweet. The combination is so delicious. As I am peeling my apples, I have this scrap bowl for my apple peelings. You can peel your apples right into there. If you're into gardening or composting, great additions to your compost pile. Not really super important to get all of the peel off on the top of the core and on the bottom, but I do kind of like to run it around like this just to get the most off, but if there's a little bit of peel left on there, it really doesn't matter. Another thing about apples and when you're cooking apples is that they break down differently. It's really important not only to choose the combination of tart and sweet apples, it's also important to choose apples that are gonna hold up to the heat and you really want the sliced apples to have that bite when you bite into them instead of breaking down completely. And there we have it. I'm gonna get my apple peelings out of the way and then now it is time to slice. I'm cutting these into half inch slices, cut the apple core out. They are thicker than a traditional apple slice that you would eat. You don't want them to break down while they're cooking. There are three main cobbler types in the South. My cobbler that I grew up with was kind of a dump and stir method of a cobbler. There is another type that is similar to what you might think of as a pie, but this cobbler that we're making today is using the biscuit method. We're really unclear of the origin of cobbler and the name. We're just kind of unsure about the whole thing, where it came from. So we have a couple of theories. A cob actually means a small round lump. Cobblestones, think about that. A cobblestone street. And so when you're thinking about this apple cobbler with drop biscuits, the top of it it looks like a cobblestone street that we have cobbled together with small round lumps of cobs or biscuits on the top of this cobbler. I'm working on my last Honeycrisp apple and then I need to heat my skillet over medium high heat. And while my butter is melting in my skillet, I am going to toss all of my apple slices with some flour and brown sugar. Brown sugar has that molasses in it, which just gives it a really nice depth of flavor. We want to make sure that the flour and the brown sugar kind of coat all of our apple slices. The flour will help soak up all of the juices that are gonna be released between the sugar melting and the apples releasing all of their juices in the hot skillet. And it'll help thicken that apple juice. And then you won't have a soupy goopy mess of a cobbler after it comes out of the oven. As soon as your butter has melted, dump in your apple slices. This will fill your entire skillet. But as soon as the apples start to cook and break down and release their juices, they will shrink significantly. All of this will take about 10 minutes. Okay, y'all, look at this. This is what you're looking for when I say that your juices are thick. The flour has done its job, so I am turning my heat off and I'm going to stir in one cup of homemade apple butter. Perfect addition for this. I really just think it brings out the depth of flavor of the apples without having to cook apple slices to death to get that really rich, deep flavor that you're looking for. And now I'm going to add in a teaspoon of lemon zest and two tablespoons of lemon juice. When you're zesting and juicing lemons, you always want to zest your lemons before you juice them. It is a lot easier to zest a whole lemon than it is to zest a half lemon that has been squeezed with the juice out. Okay, lemon juice and zest into my skillet along with a quarter teaspoon of salt. And I'm gonna give this a stir. 
Now I know what you're thinking. We just cooked those apples down and the flour soaked up all the juice and now you're adding more lemon juice. We're about to pop this in the oven and cook it for about 15 minutes. Since the flour is still in there, the flour will still continue to do its job, soak up all of the juices and that lemon just brightens the whole thing up. That's it. It is going into my preheated oven. I have it at 425 degrees. Pop it in the oven for about 15 minutes. Then we'll get ready for these biscuits. The perfect addition to a cobbler. Pro tip number one for this recipe, you wanna have everything pre-measured. It makes it so much easier to have all of your things ready to go in a bowl. So as you are mixing, it's ready and you're not having to measure while you are also stirring. Another reason why this is super important, especially in baking, anytime that a recipe has chemical leavening ingredients like baking powder or baking soda, these things are activated by heat and by liquid. So as soon as your baking powder or baking soda hits liquid with the flour, it's gonna start doing its job. It's gonna start bubbling. It's gonna start causing your things to mix and rise. You wanna get it in the oven so it has time to do its job. If you let it sit for a long time, your biscuits are not gonna rise properly. These biscuits are gonna take no time at all. I have two cups of all-purpose flour in this big bowl that I'm going to add in baking powder and some kosher salt and three tablespoons of granulated sugar. Cold butter is essential for this recipe. I actually keep butter in the freezer for that very reason. Anytime I need a biscuit fix, you have to have cold butter. This is 10 tablespoons of very cold butter that I have cut into cubes. What I'm doing is cutting butter into fat. This is what creates flaky, fluffy biscuits. This is a pastry blender. If you don't have one, you could use two forks or even your fingers to get this method done. The butter, when you're breaking it down into pea-sized crumbles and each of those is coated in flour. The heat will cause the butter to kind of evaporate and create fluffy, flaky pillows. And that's what makes biscuits so, so amazing. This looks great. Now it's time for me to add milk. What I've done is I've taken three tablespoons out of my cup. So it's one cup of whole milk minus three tablespoons. I've just found that this works a little bit better than the really, really soupy biscuit dough. You want your biscuits to kind of hold their shape in the oven. So biscuits that are really wet won't do that as well as biscuits that are a little bit on the drier side. And you really don't wanna mix this too well just whenever your milk has moistened all of your dry ingredients. All I'm doing is waiting on my apples to come out of the oven and I can put this biscuit dough into clumps on top of our apples in the skillet. My apples are done in the oven. They look so good. It's very thick. They barely move around in the skillet and that is what we're looking for. An ice cream scoop is gonna make this part go a lot smoother. So I wanna do about one third cup mounds of the biscuit dough onto my apples. They don't have to be perfect. They will spread out in the oven. If you don't like where you placed one, you can kind of pick it up, put it back down in a place that looks better to you. And then I'm gonna take some melted butter on the top of each one of my biscuits. This gives it a nice golden brown sheen that is just so beautiful in a crisp crust. And honestly, the more butter, the better. I love the flavor that it imparts on the biscuits as well. And then to really take it over the edge, I have one tablespoon of granulated sugar that I'm going to put on top of each one of these biscuits. What this does is also adds a lot of crispy, crunchy texture to these biscuits. That is just so, so delicious. Don't leave any sugar left in your bowl. You want all of that on your biscuits in every nook and cranny. And that's it. It is gonna go back in the oven, still at 425 degrees for about 18 to 20 minutes until the biscuits are cooked, golden, crispy on the top. Your apples are already cooked, so they really don't need any more time in the oven. Really just worried about those biscuits. While this cobbler is baking in the oven, one thing that I think is just so much fun 
is to go through our What's Cooking Facebook group and see what y'all have to say about recipes like this. I was reading the comments and there was a comment from Dawn and she said, did you like this recipe? I was going to try it soon. And Jenny responded to her and she said, yes, we did. I really love the apple butter recipe. The apple butter recipe goes into this apple cobbler. I highly recommend making the apple butter from scratch and not using store-bought for this recipe. Dawn replied back to Jenny and said, I made the apple butter and we love it. I love it on biscuits. Perfect pairing with this biscuit apple cobbler that is in the oven right now. This is it. This is why I love this community of Facebook people. We can share all of our favorite recipes and I love seeing y'all make these things at home. Oh my goodness. Look at this. The apples are crisp and brown. The biscuits are beautiful. They are imperfect and lumpy, and that's what I love about them, just like a cobblestone street. What we think it got its name from. Of course, no apple cobbler is complete without a generous scoop of vanilla ice cream on the top. That combination of hot and cold. I cannot wait to dig into this apple cobbler. Have to create the perfect bite. A little bit of biscuit, a little bit of ice cream, and a little bit of the apple filling with the apple butter. It's gonna be so rich and yummy. Mm. Perfection. Even though I grew up with the jump and stir cobbler method, the more that I've eaten this biscuit method, it might be the favorite in my book. This one is so, so tasty.